Hey everyone, welcome back to Bewitching Brain. We're so happy to have you with us and encourage you to subscribe and share. Take good care, be safe, and help others be safe. In this video, we conclude our series on the sensory systems. We end with our first video on the nervous system and disease. Now that we're building more understanding of the healthy functioning of the nervous system, we can start to understand what happens when certain elements don't work normally. In this video, we'll be talking about demyelinating disease, which affects the functions of neurons. Remember from the myelination video that myelinating neurons have myelinated segments interspersed with nodes of Ranvier. This allows for saltatory conduction, which speeds up the travel of the action potential down the length of the axon. Based on the importance of myelination in speeding up action potentials, we can start understanding what might happen if the neuron starts losing its myelin. If a neuron that relies on myelination for signaling starts to become demyelinated, it will become less able to transmit an action potential effectively. Eventually, if the demyelination progresses, it will lose its signal transmission ability completely. You can probably guess that demyelination is not part of the normal healthy functioning of neurons. Demyelination often occurs due to autoimmunity. To understand autoimmunity, it is first important to understand that the immune system generally only destroys microbes that invade our body, such as bacteria and viruses. However, occasionally the immune system attacks our own body. This is called autoimmunity. Auto means self. In some demyelinating diseases, the immune system generates proteins called antibodies that bind to myelin on neurons. In this diagram, you can see an antibody in orange bound to a myelinated segment on a neuron axon. Antibodies are specialized immune system proteins that bind to foreign particles and target them for destruction by the immune cells. The antibodies that bind myelin on neurons in demyelinating disease are called autoantibodies because they bind self particles instead of foreign particles, such as bacteria or viruses. This results in destruction of the myelin by immune cells. Today we'll introduce two different types of demyelinating diseases, multiple sclerosis and Guillain-Barre syndrome. Multiple sclerosis is a demyelinating disease of the central nervous system, while Guillain-Barre syndrome is a demyelinating disease of the peripheral nervous system. Recall that the central nervous system consists of the brain and spinal cord, while the peripheral nervous system consists of nerds, nerves outside of the brain and spinal cord. Also recall from the myelination video that neurons in the central nervous system are myelinated by oligodendrocytes, while neurons in the peripheral nervous system are myelinated by Schwann cells. Okay, let's start with multiple sclerosis. So how does MS affect the nervous system and what symptoms do people have with MS? MS has both autoimmune and inflammatory effects on the spinal cord and brainstem. We'll talk more about the brainstem in our next series but just know for now that it connects the spinal cord to the brain and has some important vital functions. The demyelination and inflammation can result in abnormal speech, coordination, and sensation, as well as other abnormalities. Earlier in the series, we talked about vision and how the optic nerve carries visual information from the photoreceptors in the retina to the occipital lobe in the brain. Demyelination and inflammation of the optic nerve can cause pain as well as vision loss. MS can happen in a wide range of people, but it is more common in women aged 20 to 50. So how do doctors treat MS? MS is treated by neurologists and specifically neuroimmunologists. These doctors deal with diseases of the nervous system involving the immune system. Treatment of MS involves reducing inflammation and managing symptoms such as pain. In addition, there are more specific treatments that target the underlying immunity. If you have questions about specific treatments, please let us know in the comments. 
Next, we'll talk about Guillain-Barre syndrome or GBS. GBS, like MS, also has both autoimmune and inflammatory effects on nerves. This causes muscle weakness as well as abnormal sensation. Muscle weakness in GBS begins in the lower legs and then progresses upwards. So who gets GBS? There is an association between GBS and gastrointestinal or respiratory tract infections. Many patients with GBS had a recent GI or resp tract infection. GBS is treated using immunoglobulins that bind to the autoimmune antibodies that are attacking the myelin on neurons. This helps prevent further demyelination. De GBS is also treated using plasmapheresis, which can get rid of the harmful autoantibodies. Please take a couple minutes to complete this post-series survey. We appreciate your feedback and all responses are completely anonymous. Thanks for listening, Brainiacs. Tune in next week for more.